Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's learn how to use render textures. This is a Unity feature that is extremely useful for making all kinds of interesting effects, like an in-game TV or a minimap or much, much more. Also, this video is a lecture taken from my Ultimate Unity Overview course. Unity is massive, so in the course I explain over 30 features and tools of the engine that you might not know about. There's individual lectures explaining tons of things, like Shadograph, Assembly Definitions, ProBuilder, the video player, and so on. Also, the course will continuously be updated with free updates as I add more and more lectures explaining more and more tools and features. So go ahead and get the full course and learn how to master all of the Unity tools to help you make better games faster. In this lecture, we're going to learn all about render textures in Unity. This is a really awesome feature that has limitless potential for making some really cool effects. Essentially, they are textures that you can render onto. So instead of having the camera render directly onto the screen, you can make it render onto a texture, and then you can use that texture to make all kinds of effects, like an in-game TV or a minimap or some custom post processing. So let's see how it works. First thing we need to do is actually create the render texture. So for that, just right click, go into create, and up here we've got the render texture. So you get the object, and over here in the inspector we can see all of these settings. Now the most important one is up here going to be the size. So this is the resolution of the rendered texture. Naturally, with a high resolution, you will get better quality, but at the same time, obviously, it has a cost for performance. So the resolution needs to be tailored towards what you're going to use the texture for. The size of the resolution itself is very important, as is the aspect ratio. So with 256 by 256, I've got a square image. Then you can apply anti-aliasing or not. Again, this is going to have a certain performance cost. You can set the depth buffer to be included or not. So no depth buffer, no stencil or width stencil. And the rest are pretty similar to the normal texture options. So enable mip map, play around the color format, mess around with the wrap mode, filter mode, and so on. Okay, so this is the rendered texture. Now let's see how we can use it. Over here from my very simple demo, I simply got a player character that I can move around. And now let's say I want to create a TV to see myself moving. So for that, let's create a new camera. So a new camera, let's name this the TV camera. And now just like this, both cameras are rendering onto the same screen. However, if we go into the camera and down here, we go into the output section. Here we have an output texture field. And as you can see, it receives a type render texture. So if we drag our render texture onto it and you just like that, the main camera is back to normal. And now the render texture, yep, there you go. Now it is rendering what that camera is seeing. So this second camera is rendering onto the texture instead of the screen. So now let me just place it on a random position. So let's say about here. And here's a quick Unity shortcut. You move around the scene view, then select the object and then hit Control Shift F and it places that object directly in there. All right, so there I've got my TV camera. And all we need to do is just make a simple quad to display our texture. So let me create a 3D object. Let's say a quad and let's position it in there. Then just make a material for it and simply render this render texture. So we're using the render texture as if it's a normal texture. And now if I hit play and yep, there it is. We have our TV fully working. So as I'm moving around, yep, I can see my character move around on that TV. All right, awesome. So these are the basics for render textures. You render a camera onto a texture instead of directly onto the screen. Now, one feature that is perfect for this is making a minimap. So for that, instead of placing the TV camera on the side, let's place it directly above. So let's put the Y position about on 20, everything else on zero, and let's just angle it downwards. So down by 90 degrees. And now for a minimap, you don't want to render it directly on the scene view, but instead of on the UI, so let's create a UI. Let's first of make a canvas, then inside make a UI. And now here you see two objects. So normally you would use a normal image. So if I go and see it, yep, this is a normal image. So you can choose a sprite and it shows up. However, if I try to drag the rendered texture, nope, does not work. That is because this one expects a sprite and not a texture. So in order to show a texture or a rendered texture on the UI, you remove this component and instead of adding an image, you add a raw image. And now this one does take a normal texture as its input. So if we drag this one on there, yep, there you go. Now it does correctly display our render texture. So this is our UI and let's just put it down in the corner. And 
And let's just add an outline just to make it look a bit nice. Okay, so let's play and see. And all right, here I am, and as I move, yep, I can indeed see myself moving from the camera that is seen from above. Now, a Minimac camera is usually supposed to be a 2D camera, so in there that one has some perspective, so it's not supposed to do that. So that's an easy fix. Instead of making a perspective camera, just make an orthographic. Then play around the size. And yep, now that is correct, we've got a flat camera. So like this, the minimap is working, but minimaps are usually a simplified representation of the world, and not exactly the same thing, but smaller. So let's see how we can achieve that. Now doing that is very simple. We just need to play around with the normal camera features. So for example, up here, we've got the culling mask. So this is which layers this camera will render. So let's make a new layer just for our minimap objects. So let's go up here to the layers. Let's add a new layer. Let's name this the minimap. And now we go into our TV camera. Let's actually rename this to the minimap camera. And here on the culling mask, instead of everything, first let's select nothing and then only the minimap. So now as you can see, it's not rendering anything. And now we go into the player game object. And in here, let's add a component. Let's add a 2D sprite, just a normal square sprite. This is going to be the minimap icon. And then we just need to put this on the layer, put it on the minimap layer. Then let's play around the size and maybe the color. And then just need to make sure that it's pointing upwards. So let's just flip it over here on the X. And yep, like this, we do see the player on the minimap, but we're also seeing it on the main camera. So again, very simple. We just go into the main camera and on the culling mask, we render everything except the minimap layer. And yep, that is correct. Now we can just play around with the minimap in case we want. So for example, let's make a round minimap instead. And yep, there it is. So all I did was just make an image for the border visual and then another one for the mask. So for the image, just a circle and then just made it a mask. And then inside it, I've got the raw image with the render texture. So with all that, yep, here we have our awesome minimap fully working. It was very easy to do and all of it thanks to render textures. Now, as you saw on the render textures over here, you can also include the depth buffer and the stencil buffer. So with all that data, you can get as creative as you want with your render textures and making some custom shaders. Okay, now let's just briefly see some code. So first you can create the render texture like we saw, create the normal asset in the project files, or you can create it directly in code by using the constructor. So new render texture. And then here you can copy the settings from another render texture or just create it by default. So give it a size, depth, and so on. So that's how you create it. Then for dynamically assigning it to a camera, you go, for example, let's grab the main camera and you modify the target texture. So this is the target render texture that we saw previously in the editor. So in here you would set it. Then in order to remove it and have the camera render back onto the screen, you would set it to null. So for example, if you want to capture the main camera to do something, you would set the target texture. Then you would tell the camera to render and then you would set the render texture back into null. So that would essentially take a screenshot and it would stay over here on the render texture. All right, so that's render textures in Unity. It's an awesome feature that has limited potential for making all kinds of effects to make your games really stand out. All right, so this was a lecture for my Ultimate Unity Overview course. There's lots more explaining tons of things like shader graph, assembly definitions, Pro Builder, the video player, and so on. Go ahead and get the full course and learn how to master all of the Unity tools and features at your disposal in order to help you make better games faster. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.